the biggest lie ever told in Albion Online that you will see in the general chat, on Reddit, on the discords and forums, is that risk equals reward. I'm going to debunk this myth, this lie, and explain exactly why that is not true at all for solo guildless players. Let's debunk the first myth in that you get more fame in the black zone, and yes, if you kill a single mob, you technically do get more fame when you kill a mob. However, for guildless solo players, and I don't mean, you know, those of you that have made your own guild so you can take advantage of laborers, I'm talking someone who is not in an alliance, that does not own hideouts in the black zone, that is not in a guild, or you have constant protection, scouting, and, you know, uh logistics, people in Discord radioing in when there's invaders and, you know, safety, you know, patrols and all that stuff. For a guildless player, you go into the black zone, you're, you're food. You are just someone else's product to eat. You are there to be consumed by the guilds. You, you, you can survive for a little while in a black zone in, as a solo, sure. Not indefinitely. You will eventually be killed or driven out. That is just the truth. So let's talk about fame farming, okay? The reason why you can outfarm Black Zone in a in a tier 4 blue zone is simple. You're allowed to wear 8.4 gear. And technically, let's say you're a credit card swiper. Yes, you could bring 8.4 gear into the Black Zone. You absolutely could. The second you do, everyone and their friends and their grandmothers and people that haven't even heard of the game will be phoned in to install the game and help them kill you. They're going to radio in basically an entire battalion, a full army, to hunt you down and take your loot because you are ultra juicy in that 8.4. There is no escape. You will eventually be found out. All exits will be covered and you'll be killed for your gear. This is why you can't use a satchel. You can't use the most powerful gear in the game to speed farm fame in the black zone because you will eventually die and the silver that you've spent on the gear will be lost, putting you at a net negative. So, in a tier 4 blue zone, I can farm 20 million fame per hour. Whereas, farming in a tier 8 open world black zone with a 250k budget set that farms very quickly, only 2.5 million fame per hour. There is a huge difference in fame per hour in these two zones. And guess what? My method, which has 20 million fame per hour... There's no risk. There is literally zero risk. Maybe someone might gank me while I'm faction flagged. I don't lose gear. I don't really lose time because I'm faction flagged. I don't lose three minutes of my life. I lose a 20 second run back. And I've never been successfully ganked because if you're an 8.4 gear, your ganker also has to be an 8.4 gear or massively outnumber you. And people simply don't just zerg around in, in the blue zones especially. So you're, it's safe. And you can't lose your gear, you can't lose progress or time, it's just superior. Now let's talk silver farming methods, okay? Let's start talking about dungeons, which is not something you, could, you should be doing. But let's say you're running 8.3 mapped dungeons in the black zone. Yes, you can go from a portal town, hopefully no one scouts you and invades. A lot of times they will invade, especially because they are ESP hacking. They are looking out, like, as soon as someone pops an 8.3 map... Everyone's ESP has a freaking thing that goes off, maybe bells and whistles or bright lights or something. It's like, hey, look at this super rare dungeon, go get it. And uh, yes, a lot of people hack. If you are unaware of how many people hack in video games, just go look at Escape from Tarkov. Like, half the freaking player base is hackers. Okay, you think that... I'm not saying that half the player base in Albion are hackers, but it's a very large amount. Okay, and with that said, they're all in guilds and clans in the black zone, so it just takes one hacker to alert 20 to 40 people, you know, within a few minutes on Discord. Hey, there's a 8-3 dungeon, someone pops, someone go get them. And, and yeah, you could wait 90 seconds, and let's say you do wait your 90 seconds so the dungeon closes. Just because you used an 8.3 map does not guarantee you millions of silver. Sure, you could get some millions back, but the cost of the map, you're most likely never going to make it back. And even if you just did regular dungeons in the black zone for free, you're not making more silver than speedrunning yellow zone dungeons. For one, it's the same problem with gear. You're not going to be using 8.4 gear. You're going to be using a budget set that you can afford to lose, 
And because you're using a budget set, you can't speed clear the dungeons nearly as fast as speed clearing a yellow zone dungeon. I can clear a yellow zone dungeon in 8.3 in 1 minute 45 seconds on average. And back in the day when dungeons were actually good, this made me millions per hour. Now it's... 350k is kind of a low average that I'm getting per hour doing dungeons. It's not a lot. But I have gotten 1 million uh, recently, at least twice this week doing yellow zone dungeons. 1 million per hour, that is without premium, so that's pretty darn good, okay? And it's risk-free, I'm not getting killed, I'm not losing my loot. Again, you know, the point goes to the safe zones. Now, let's talk about gathering. In the black zone, most of the nodes are empty because the clans and the guilds all farm everything empty every single day. It's their job, it's their job in the guild, they're gonna do it. ESPers, which are, it's a hack radar, it's a hack tool that shows you everything around you. And they, they're going to sniff out all the nodes pretty quickly and mine them all, and there's going to be none left for you. Hideout owners will also chase you away from their zone, because remember, you're a solo guildless player. You don't belong in their zone. When they see you in their zone, they will hunt you down and kill you, especially if you're stealing their resources. Several hours... It takes for high-end nodes to be fully stacked, whereas in the blue zone, a tier 2 node will take 3 minutes to fully stack. Which means you can have really nice rotations and not just farm a zone and then it's barren for hours, okay? There's also very little players in the blue zones, believe it or not, especially if you play during off hours. It's 4.46 in the morning, though it is a weekend, so there's going to be a little bit more players. But essentially, I can go to a blue zone and there'll be like 5 people there and I have the map entirely to myself. I can use tier eight tools, Avalonian tools, tier eight gear, the biggest bag and the bestest mount. And I'm going to be able to easily out farm the, the gatherers. Now I will say there, this is the one, the one exception in this entire video will be gathering because there are a few YouTubers that have shown they can outpace blue zone farming, but they're mostly hacking, and they're also very lucky, but at the same time, they're not outpacing the blue zone, and let me tell you exactly why. The reason why is if you check their murder ledger death logs, they're losing millions and millions of silver to make those videos, okay? For every one video you see where they got out and, you know, avoided all the gankers and made a couple million in one hour, They've died 10 times and lost 10 to 20 million silver just to make that one cherry-picked video. Whereas in, in the blue zone, you're not, you're not ever dying. You're not ever losing gear. You're ne not ever losing all that time you spent gathering. And it's just... And I can push 1.2 million per hour in a blue zone. Uh, with premium, that is. Without premium, it's about 1 million, maybe 900k, 800k. I can still push that that much with skinning. But another thing too, like, look how high up you have to actually uh, gather to to get profits. So we're going to go with resources, and we're going to go with hide, and I'm going to show you. Because uh, hide is the most expensive one. I just, I'm a little blind at the moment. Okay, so tier 2 hide is worth 38. Cool. Okay, tier 3, 39, 78 at tier 4, and 389 at tier 5. Now, at tier 6, it's not much higher, it's 1,200, tier 7, 3,100, and tier 8, 9,367. So, let me explain just a few things, because I know you're looking at this and you're like, well, that is high, that's a way higher thing. If you find a tier 8 mob to skin, it's going to take 8 hours for them to be fully stacked, okay? And uh, you're going to get, uh, what is it, 5 hits, so you're, you might get 10. So this 10 stack of resilient hide, okay, you're gonna you're gonna be able to make on average what is that 93,000, okay? So how many tier twos do you have to farm for 93,000? Well, let's see here. It would be about two to three stacks of rugged hide, which you can do very very easily in like 15 minutes, or even faster if you use laborers and you use journals. Then I get. Just with 24 laborers, which is 30, like, no, it's 15 minutes. I get one and a half stacks, okay? Stay so, on. technically, just from laborers alone, that makes up for that. And here's the thing, you're not going to just go, if you go to the a tier 8 black zone, it's going to take you a while to get there. 
Let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? I'm going to start at the Bridgewatch portal because remember, I am a guildless solo player. I don't get to start out in, at Arthur's Rest. I don't get to start out at a hideout in the middle over here. I have to go find a tier 8 black zone, okay? So that's one, or let's let's count. One, two, three. Uh, let's see. Cave is four. That's five. Six... Seven. It takes seven zones to get here. And this, well, this doesn't have a skidding, but just pretend it does, okay? On average, seven zones. And it's going to take you two to three minutes per zone. That's already 30 minutes. I've already made a full stack of tier eight skinning in the time it takes you just to ride there, okay? And, and you know, thanks to the recent patches, you get, you get to teleport home. So you don't have to ride back. You know, so that does soften or close the gap a little bit. But the point is, is that you're not, as a solo guildless player, you're not going to outpace me. And those YouTubers I was talking about early, earlier, they're in guilds. They're, they're also protected. They have lots of friends. They're usually in a raid group of like 10 to 15 people doing the same thing. And, uh, but you're not. <laughs> you, you aren't. And if you check their murder ledger, like I said, they're losing millions just to make those those videos. All right, because they, they want you, the new player out there, gathering for them so that when you're nice and fat and juicy, they pop you and take er all your hard work and all your gathering goods. And, uh, you know, it's like they're just gathering the gatherers at this point. So, again, that's, a that's an L for, for gathering. Let's talk about mists now. Now, a lot of people are like, well, mists... Solve the problem of guilds constantly killing and camping you. You want to know the truth about mists? Mists are actually worse. You shouldn't really do yellow zone mists except for fishing, honestly, because they're pretty useless otherwise. But mists for the black zone is the biggest meme in the game. And let me explain why, okay? The mists are an end game activity where all of the top PvP fame farming players go to fight all of these players that you see high ranked for this week these guys all farm each other in 8.3 and 8.4 gear in the mists that's what they're doing can and, and here's the thing they're they're funded by their viewers because a lot of them are streamers they're funded by credit card swiping or their guilds yep that's right they're funded by their guilds these guys albion online to them is not a way to strengthen your character get lots of money get lots of land it is instead a way for them to just chase the leaderboards. They just, they all they care about is getting rank number one on the PvP fame. That's all they care about. And so because of that, that's all they're going out and doing is going to the mists because it's the most, it's the best place they can fight. If they go into the black zone, guilds will kill them and take their 8.3 gear. And yes, there's a few players on here that aren't using 8.3 like Mean Shock here. I believe he uses 8.1. He's using 8.1 and he's killing... Um, yeah, he's, he's killing, you know, the really juicy players. Uh, actually, he's, he did use 8-3 there. I guess he got a little spindy. But players like him have hundreds of millions of just silver sitting around and ways to replenish those funds quite easily. Unless you have max level crafting and refining and a red zone ganking group, you're not actually going to uh, be able to afford to take 8.3 sets out into the mists and just farm other players, okay? So it's not a place for you to make money. It is if you're rich. If you're super rich and you don't care about... A lot of these players lose money. In his case, he earns money. But uh, he's an exception, the one that I just showed. Uh, if you look at um, a lot of other players, they just piss away multiple millions in sets because they are only chasing the PvP fame count. They're not there to make money. They're there to make PvP fame and nothing else. Which is a useless statistic that doesn't really do anything for you, except for bragging rights, which in 10 years doesn't really help you with anything. Like, in 10 years from now, no one cares that you're one of the top Halo 2 players the world has ever seen. No one cares if you were one of the first level 99s in the Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction Season 2 ladder. People just don't honestly care. And you may say, well, well I care because it's me. And yeah, great, you created a memory, but uh, most players, most new players, most regular players that have jobs and lives and stuff don't care about that stuff, and so they get told on Reddit and these discords and these forums that 
The risk equals reward. Go to the mists and use a, a high tier set. You can make lots of money, dude. Just ask them. Ask these redditors. Name the player that's making this amount of money as a guildless solo player, and they'll give you a name. Check the murder ledger and look at all the losses. Check the murder ledger. They're actually in a very big alliance that are heavily protected. They, you know, you open their streams. They're living in hideouts in the black zone. They're not guildless solo players like you and me and 80% of the player base. They are taking advantage of the power of friendship and the protection of having all your homies nearby and on Discord on a call. That's that's just the truth, okay? Yes, if you have those things, you can obviously outfarm and outpace people uh, in the black zones with your power of friendship. But as a solo player, you don't have that privilege. You 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 cannot outfarm doing yellow and blue zone activities in the black zone when you are in that state. The next argument these Redditors try to make is that a new player won't be able to afford 8.3 gear and or they can't equip it. So let's look at this. Spike Gauntlets 8.3. 5.2 million in cost. You go out on a new character with your free 3 days of premium and you skin for 8 hours out of those 3 days, you can buy these gloves. You can't equip them, but you can buy them. So you, you start with the tier 4, you know, 4.3 Spike Gauntlets. That's fine. You equip those, and you farm open-world mobs for one day. That's all it takes. Not, not, I'm not saying 24 hours. I'm just saying just one day of you sit down, you play some games. And when I say one day, I don't mean like a three-hour session. I mean a whole gamer session. You wake up, it's your day off. You don't have to go to work that day. You don't have any family obligations. You wake up, you eat breakfast, you play game. You eat lunch, you play game. You eat dinner, you play game, you go to bed. Okay? You do that for one day. Guess what? You're level 100 mastery on, on gauntlets, on, on war gloves. Now you can equip tier 8. And then when you skin that one day, you can now buy the tier 8. And then here's the thing too. There, an, another argument is that, well, that's a waste. What if I don't like it? What if I don't want to use this? What if I don't, you know, if I'm not having fun using this? And the thing is, unlike other MMORPGs, these aren't soul mount. I can take these gauntlets and put them on the market and sell them. And they will sell in a few days. And I will make that 5.2 million back, although I will pay a 4% tax uh, by using an, an alt character to uh, uh, basically, you know, get that three days of premium so I can list it on that character. But essentially, what, I lost 4% of 5.2 million. But you, you also, like, one of the best things, too, when you're new, especially to any game or anything in general, is the faster you can find out what you like and what you hate, the better off you are in the long run. But besides that, you know, I use these to open world fame farm if I want. You know, you will always have this to make money. You will always have these stash of items to be able to quickly farm in case something bad happens. So you will always be able to afford, if you want to, the thrills of full loot PvP. Whereas these Redditors will tell you, you know, go, go, go buy a cheap set and then go to the black zone. If I go out into the black zone in 4.1 gear... It'll take me two hours until I get a kill that's worth, that, that maybe makes me break even. Okay? I do, the, I, I, I used to do it all the time. I don't really do it on this character anymore, but I would take a 4.1 curse set out, and I'll get killed by a, like a 7-2 or a 7-3 character, but sometimes they're just really bad at the game and they credit card swipe, and I can kill them, and then I've made several million off that kill. But because I'm throwing away like a hundred sets to get that one kill... It's not worth the time. You're in a net negative until ev until eventually you find some new player that you, you punished. Whereas if you just constantly farm in the yellow zones, blue zones, you're losing nothing. And you're always advancing your character, your money, your fame. And then once you get to a point where you're powerful and rich, you can, you know, go on the black zone with more expensive sets if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. You can continue to grow your character even faster. Because the way it works is once you can start farming static zones, you can outfarm even the guild people because they're like in a in a raid group of 20 people. They go to a tier 8 static zone. They're sharing the fame between 20 people, you know, and they have scouts. They have to pay uh, to, to watch the entrances so they don't get ganked and stuff like that. And sometimes guild members just pull the plug. They, they G quit. They flag hostile. They kill their friends because they get greedy. You might be caught in the crossfire. There's all sorts of bad things that happen. But also, just the whole fact that guilds 
yell at you at the top of their lungs because you have the wrong passive on your helmet, or you have to set an alarm for a CTA, doesn't make the advantages worth it to me, honestly. If you want to, you know, be someone's virtual slave and do their virtual chores so you get slightly more fame or silver per hour than being a free man in the yellow and blue zones, playing whenever you want, however you want, without anyone breathing down your neck and screaming at you, then that's up to you. But the biggest Albion lie that risk equals reward is wrong for solo guildless players. It's it's simply wrong. It's a it's false. If you're ever on these forums, these discords, the subreddit, and someone tells you this, question them. Sh make them show you an example, and they'll say something like, "Well, in a yellow zone, you can't get tier 8.3 or 4 drops because the dungeon won't let you." And that's true. Sure. That just means the jackpot uh, chance is higher. It's like when you go to a, ca a casino and you place a, a small bet of 10 cents. The jackpot will be like $400. Where if you bet $10, the jackpot is now $400,000. Yes, you're gambling more for the potential to win more, but the, the fact that you're, you're possibly never going to see a jackpot in your entire life on those machines, you know, yeah, you could get lucky and win the lottery, or you could just not play the lottery and save your money. <laughs> like, that's the smart thing to do, okay? Uh, but it's really up to you. If, if it makes you happy, go for it. Otherwise, you know, it's usually a net loss of your time. You could There's just more efficient ways to play the game. It's just that simple. But uh, hopefully this helped. If you want to see, I have over 470 videos on this channel where I debunk this lie constantly. I have compared black zones to red zones to blue zones in many of my tests. You can type gathering, fame farming into, the, into my channel search, and you can see just tons of videos that show all the data. I show all of my work. I don't cherry pick footage. I just want to, I just, I just need to educate you guys that if you're a new player and these bozos are telling you that risk equals reward, that the thing is, is that the, this new generation of gamers, these zoomers, these these young college millennials, whatever you want to call them, uh, they they have this this mindset that that's the way things should be, and yes, it's it should be that way. Okay, in the oldest version of Albion Online, you could not use tier eight point three gear in the blue and yellow zones. The game limited your power in these zones, making you as weak as a tier five person. And because of that, it was not ever efficient to farm in the blue and yellow zones. But SBI saw that players were constantly quitting and removed the item power restrictions for those zones, allowing you to massively farm very quickly in these zones if you had the gear. And because of that, the gear you know value went way down to. But it essentially, the the point is is that these uh, this generation of people they're. It's like a mind virus. They, they, they want the world to be a certain way, and so they try to force their viewpoint by just screaming at anyone that disagrees, and then when you ask them to show proof or to explain, they don't. They just insult you and block you, and they just talk around you or try to change the subject. It's like, uh, I guarantee you if, you, if you use the subreddit, just start talking. Just start asking questions. Make them show proof. And they can't, they won't, they never will. They'll just claim misinformation or he's lying about the numbers. I'm not lying about the numbers, okay? So, <laughs> risk versus risk equals reward is not a thing in Albion Online for solo guildless players. Thank you for listening. I'm Swole Benji. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Click the right side of your screen for a very good video. It's on there right now. You can click the join button to get access to better guides uh, that are too good for the public to show. It's called being a channel member. Five bucks a month. It's like on Twitch, but it's on YouTube. You pay five bucks, you get access to those videos, and uh, it's they're really good. So go check them out if you got five bucks to spend. If not, you can join the Discord, and if you get chat rank, I'll get, you, you can get those videos for free. Uh, well, the information in the videos for free, essentially. But with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. I read every comment. See you later.